You said it would be during the week. Does it feel as good as all those Socceroos memories? It does. It does. It really does. Because where the club has come from, and um, you know, we talk about last year, well, a lot of people were talking about last year, how um, it wasn't a great year for the club. It's only three seasons old. And uh, to be able to do that, what we did, not only tonight, but from the beginning of the season is, is amazing. And uh, Alex will not know now, but he'll realise once he coaches, hopefully you coach Alex, that as a player you have to prepare for yourself and prepare, make sure that you're doing the right things uh, to go and perform. But as a coach, you've got a, a lot of other things going on. So, you know, it was, it was an amazing feeling, amazing night. And I'm so happy for the football club as a whole. It does, at the start of the season, nobody was tipping you to be here. Not Very even tonight, they were tipping us. Five dollars mm -hmm. they gave us. <laughs> five, five dollars. You know what, if, if I could bet, which I'm not a betting man, but if I could bet, I would have put so much money on that. It is, it is. Okay. They must have lost a shitload of money tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think Josh Riston means that language ship has sailed. But um, did you, like, nobody believed in you, it's clear. Did you thrive off that all season? Was that a message to your team? Not really. We never spoke about no one believing in us. It was more about us believing in ourselves. It was more about us working towards something. Uh, you know, Alex will, will remember the first conversation I had with Alex was, uh, I want you to come here because I want you to help me and help us win it. That was our conversation. So that was our mindset. Yes, then after that, there's the process and the preparation and, and the, the daily work that goes into it. But we, uh, we didn't care what others were saying. <laughs> if we did, then, or if any of us did, I don't think we'll be in this position now because the, you know, you'd be too worried about what people think of you. So we just worried about ourselves, worked hard every day and, and we get the rewards. Speaking of belief and taking it to the Neds level. Um, I guess, were you surprised by how easily the game fell into your lap in terms of complexion? Uh, I wouldn't say it was easy. It was still tough for us. Look, they're a good side. They're a very, very good side. We scored early. Um, you know, one of the things that we spoke about is that we wanted to go at them hard early. And um, they had the kickoff, so they, they put us on the back foot for about a minute. But then as soon as we won the ball, we just went at them. And, and that's why we got the corner, because we were positive. And then uh, we scored from the set piece, Alex scored, and, and we knew that then we were in a good position to actually start to hurt them. And whenever we went forward, we looked dangerous. That was the biggest thing. We, we felt that we could have played a little bit more at times. We, we, you know, sometimes we didn't, but when we did, we, we looked dangerous every time we went forward. I was about to say, because the complexion of the game didn't necessarily necessitate you guys to actually go at them and attack them, but you were not you were staying in front of the ball for the most part. Were you, did you feel as though that helped you in transition to be able to spring in such a such a damaging way? Yeah, it helps because, you know, they, they have to try and come out, they have to try and play, which they do very well. Their movement's good. They, uh, they end up, you know, trying to shift you a lot, and, and they do that really well. Uh, in the first half, I don't think they created anything. But in the second half, they pushed more and, and they had a few uh, chances. But then we always looked that we could go and, and get another goal. So it was, uh, look, was it the best performance? You don't need to, to play at your best. You need to make sure that you manage the game. And we did that well. John, how was this for you personally? Because obviously in the build-up we talked about making the grand final, overcoming that hurdle and maybe I guess silencing some doubters. Now you've actually got the silverware. How, as for you as a coach personally, how does it all sit with you, I guess? Oh, look, um, I was sitting in my hospital bed nearly three years ago and it was more, uh, I want to coach. I, I, I need to coach because I know I've got a lot more left in me and a lot more to achieve. And I believed that and I was just waiting for the right opportunity and someone giving me the, uh, that opportunity to coach. And then once you're in a job, it's, and then it's not about you, it's about the team, the club, and about uh, what we're trying to achieve as a club. And uh, so, yes, it's satisfying on a personal basis, but it's more satisfying because I see all the hard work that goes into a new club. It's not easy. But this helps. Success on the pitch helps. It helps you grow quicker. You saw how many fans we had there tonight. Um, 
that that's great. Like we we uh, you know sometimes we're playing in Ballarat in front of I don't know 500 people. So to win this uh, will help us grow as a football club. Johnny, I remember basically nine months ago sitting with you at Optus Sport, having just wrapped the Euros, and you'd been a pundit for three years. I, I think I just want to know. I mean, how did you so quickly basically change your mindset and, and just get back into coaching so quickly? And it feels like almost you just. I mean, you just transitioned back into it so quickly. How did how did you do it so just so quickly, basically? Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things that as soon as you so it's it, with anything really like as soon as you put in a position, you you switch straight away and, and you know what you're trying to do and and you know people see that, that, that they talk about the tactical side they talk about the actual you know the the, the games be, because that's what people see but all the other work that goes on in the background starts as soon as you get the job so I was in hotel quarantine after the, the euro and it was more or less about all right let's see what we need let's see what players we need to bring in Let's see what coaching staff we have. Can I bring in my co uh, one of my coaches, which I did, Hayden Fox? Um, let's see, you know, how we can actually grow, uh, and then prepare pre-season, then prepare, you know, your games. And then we had a lot of obstacles put in front of us. You know, the, the training facility at the time wasn't at its best. Then we uh, a lot of players had to go into isolation during pre-season. There was no friendly games. It was it was a bit of a mess, but. What we spoke about was being able to adapt. And so it's the same with me going from punditry to coaching. Adapt, adapt quickly, adapt quickly to an environment. And, um, and the players were able to adapt as well with any difficult circumstances. Talking about the start, John. I mean, you guys flew out to the best possible start. You got that early goal. How much did that help settle the nerves? Even probably as well for Alex, same sort of question. I mean, getting that early goal, two minutes in, fast, fastest ever grand final goal as well. Must have felt great. You know what? It can work two ways. You know, it can work two ways. You can score early and then it, it, it can be that it's a catalyst for them to lift and then, you know, all of a sudden you're hanging on and, and, and it's too early in the game. Or you can do what the boys did and stay calm, don't panic, play our game um, and just make sure that we do the things that we've been doing all season. So that, that was probably one for Alex that uh, he might be able to answer how it felt on the pitch. But we knew that that goal was early. It was an advantage for us, but we're still a long way to go. Well, Alex, um, I'd like to ask you, you've won the Joe Master medal tonight alongside, you go down now alongside some of the most famous names in Australian football history. I don't think you ever won one, John, but now Alex no. has got one. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, but... Um, could you just describe your journey to reach this point? What's that been like for you and what are you feeling right now? <coughs> well, definitely it's a very nice award. Uh, first of all, I would say that um, individual awards are always uh, uh, important, but th they, they have been achieved as a team. And uh, today the team has been uh, amazing, like from the coaching staff to everyone, to the fans, everything uh, went in our way. We believed in it in the, in the, from the very beginning. As soon as we reached the final, we knew that it's going to be tough, but that we are going to take it. Not many believed in us, as John said. Probably uh, a lot of people lost a lot of money today. <laughs> but uh, this is life, you know. But uh, um, as I say, we, 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 we believed, and it has been a very long, um, a long way, a long year. Um, the game went. In our f in our in our favor, but as John also said before, that uh, when you when you score early a goal, then it can become a very long game. So you can be uh, fighting, uh, defending for a very long time. When you receive, uh, if you concede the goal, then the, the the opposite team also gets momentum, and uh, then you can get into into trouble. But we did a, a fantastic job today, and I think everyone agrees in the stadium that we fully deserve this victory. Alex, you spoke about a couple of weeks ago about relishing the big stages, the big occasions. You've played in the Champions League, you've played in the World Cup. Now this is your first grand final. I mean, did you feel that once you got out there, biggest crowd you've played in front of, at least down here, uh, did you feel, you know, not overall by the occasion that you were able to put your best foot forward and, you know, thrive in that game? I, I, my, my, my feeling was that everyone I around think we're in us, trouble, Alex. <laughs> around <laughs> us was, <laughs> was very calm. Oh, no. John Yeah. <laughs>
Take two. <laughs> what, what, what was the question again? It was, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pl pl <laughs> playing in the big games, you know, first grand final here. Did you feel, you know, not overall by the occasion, you felt like you were able to put your best foot forward early in this sort of game? I felt the whole team was very calm uh, before the game. I felt we were very uh, calm and we knew what, have, what we have to do. We faced that, that team already three times in this season and we did a pretty good job this year against them. So, of course, we knew that every final is very difficult and anything can happen. And it's most likely the most finals are not very beautiful games. They are a bit ugly, a bit nervous in the game, you know, many long balls, many duels. But we fought that game and we got uh, rewarded uh, with two goals and yeah, we, we, we fully deserve it. John, um, final question, I suppose, but uh, <laughs> look, it'll be a throw forward one. You mentioned, you know, wandering from ground to ground, playing in front of three men and a dog in Ballarat. Now that you're the champions, does that make it uh, a lot easier, you know, to persuade players of the calibre of Alexander, more players of this ilk to come? Will, will people stop sort of seeing it as a bit of a joke, you know, the, the team that wanders everywhere with no home and no fans? Do you think this is the signal most important thing you could have done? Uh, it definitely helps. It definitely helps uh, attract players. It definitely helps attract fans. Um, but we look, we're, again, I'll mention it about, you know, we know that we're on this journey and we're going to have a training facility. We're going to have a stadium. Um, but what I loved about the players that we signed this year, it wasn't because they didn't have anywhere else to go. It was because that they wanted to create history. And, uh, you know, I, I spoke about Alex and Leo was the same. Jamie Young was the same. Uh, and Topper Stanley was the same. You know, all these players, Neil Kilkenny, the same. It wasn't that they wanted to just come because they had nothing else to go to. They wanted to come because they felt that we we're going to build something special and that we we're going to challenge and create history. And they, they're the reasons why that we we're able to do that. And, and I'm sure now it, it might be even easier because people will see that uh, we mean business. We don't just want to be here just to make up numbers. It was like tonight before the game, speaking to Steve Horvat, and um, he goes, you know, I know it's great to be here, uh, but it would be, you know, we want to win it. And I said, yeah, exactly. We're not here to, to you know, make numbers up. We're here to win. And, uh, and that's the mentality we had all season. I asked about it during the week. You signed on a two-year deal, one year down, you're championship coach are we gonna see an extension i don't know you have to ask jason our chairman that yeah would you like to, to oh, well, it, of course it depends if everything's all right i'd love to <laughs> <laughs> show me the money <laughs> <laughs> thank you